It's the largest warship in the world. On the high seas, it stands unrivaled. And for its very first deployment, the aircraft carrier USS Gerald R. Ford headed from North America to Europe, making the transatlantic journey to train alongside NATO allies. The Gerald R. Ford is the first ship in a new class of U.S. Navy aircraft carriers. It's a nuclear-powered, technologically advanced floating airfield with enough firepower to deter potential adversaries on site. After years of sea trials and shock tests, the Ford was finally ready to deploy alongside NATO allies in October 2022. The journey across the Atlantic begins in Halifax, Canada. From there, the Ford and its multinational carrier strike group will retrace the path blazed by Canadian and U.S. merchant ships during World War II. Over 80 years ago, Canadians, Americans and our allies fought together uh, across the Atlantic to secure the sea lines of communication. They endured heavy seas, they endured a relentless enemy, but they enabled that war effort and enabled victory throughout that longest battle of World War II. And today we continue that, uh, that tradition. From there, the aircraft carrier evolved, growing in size and strength. Nuclear power plants gave them global range, while the advent of steam-powered catapults let them launch heavier fighters. Aircraft carriers were soon a common sight in Allied navies, including France and the United Kingdom, with a strike group of warships accompanying them. These ships carry powerful weapons of their own, but their main mission is to defend the carrier against attack. Protected by this ring of steel, the carrier can sail almost anywhere. If I had to capture what a carrier strike group is, I would describe it simply as a centerpiece of power projection. We operate self-sustained, independent, and can go anywhere globally uh, to where, wherever we need to go. At the drop of a hat. Commissioned in 2017, the USS Gerald R. Ford is the first ship in a brand new class. And, according to the US Navy, the most technologically advanced carrier to ever set sail. But what makes it different from what came before? Our propulsion plant is, is all new, new electrical distribution system. Smaller crew intended for less maintenance. We're excited about the new technologies that Ford brings to the table. The most prominent ones are the electromagnetic aircraft launch system and the advanced arresting gear. Most aircraft carriers launch jets off their flight decks with catapults powered by steam but you won't see any hot air coming off the Ford's flight deck. This ship uses an electromagnetic launch system to get its jets airborne. When it comes to these new catapults, there's more than meets the eye. We can shoot aircraft at a wider range in terms of weight, and we anticipate using more unmanned vehicles in the coming years. Those might be lighter than the strike fighters that we're, we're shooting right now. Uh, and we anticipate less stress on those aircraft, less lifetime cost on the aircraft. But when it comes down to it, the most important thing on an aircraft carrier is the aircraft. Embarked on the Ford is Carrier Air Wing 8, which includes approximately 60 aircraft. From strike fighters to surveillance aircraft and helicopters, each airframe has a role. Uh, you can almost think of it like a football team. You have layers of defense, you also have layers of offense. They all have to work together in order for that play to succeed. While a fully loaded flight deck is certainly impressive, those planes can't fly without pilots. Far from the cocky aviators of Top Gun fame, today's fighter pilots embrace a different mindset. We definitely subscribe to a bit of a work hard, play hard mentality, but really what we end up looking for is somebody who is humble, credible, and approachable. The Naval Aviators of Strike Fighter Squadron 37, the Raging Bulls, trained to fly everything from bombing raids to combat air patrols to acting as flying gas stations for other fighters. What does an ordinary day look like in this less than ordinary job? About an hour prior to your takeoff, uh, you're gonna go get kitted up, uh, get all your flight gear on, and then it's time to go up to the flight deck. So the flight deck is always a very dynamic and quite dangerous place, so you kind of have to be strategic. Once you're in the airplane, a whole bunch of checks to do between your systems and the ship. It's a whole lot of work leading up to that catch shot, which is the moment that you've been waiting for. 
defining trait of naval aviator is the ability to land on a small, floating runway in the middle of a very large and very unforgiving sea. To accomplish this feat, the Hornets use a tail hook to snag a thick steel cable, bringing 20 tons of metal to a dead stop in a matter of seconds. Landing on an aircraft carrier is uh, definitely difficult, it's challenging. Uh, we've got a whole lot of technology uh, helping us do it. In the moments leading up to touching down on the aircraft carrier, really kind of fine-tuning those corrections to make sure uh, that you're on the optimal glide path just prior to touching down. There might have used to be panic and uncertainty. That's what you do all the training for to get all of those moments out of the way. It's been several days since the Ford set off from Halifax. Its sailors have settled into the groove of daily operations. With more than 4,000 sailors aboard, the Ford isn't just a ship. It's an office, a dinner table, a gym, a home. A ship this big can burn through supplies at an alarming rate. To top off its stocks, the Ford must conduct replenishments at sea, a complicated operation where pulleys and helicopters ferry across everything from jet fuel to air-to-air -air missiles to mail from home. The journey, referred to by sailors as an underway, can be long and routine can lead to tedium. But the mission is more than worth the effort. Being at sea for a long period of time, it does get a little stressful sometimes. You have to find ways to be able to relieve stress, whether that be going to the gym, decompressing, having conversations with other people and friends. We have to make that camaraderie and be able to get to the finish line of the mission. The Ford has crossed the Atlantic to arrive off the shores of Portugal. Sailing alongside it are ships from six NATO allies. Their job is to keep the carrier safe and to provide extra firepower in the simulated battles that will test the carrier strike group's combat readiness. It's been a long trip, but now it's time to hit the throttles and see what the world's largest warship can do. Day and night, the flight deck is busy as jets launch on training missions that simulate air interceptions, surface strikes, and anti-submarine warfare. We're here to conduct high-level maritime operations across the spectrum. We're here to showcase the Gerald R. Ford and then integrate allies and partners. No nation can truly uh, stand on their own. We are stronger as an alliance, and so working together allows us to create those frameworks and through exercises, truly be able to work in partnership with each other whenever we need to. As the exercise nears its end, and the Ford prepares to conclude its journey in Portsmouth, England, the flight deck turns emotional as several of the ship's naval aviators share a bittersweet milestone, the last carrier landings in their naval careers. Certainly we're all going to have to uh, stop doing this one day. Uh, we're always going to miss the flying for sure, every single one of us, but we're really, 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 it's going to be about missing the people. Yeah, the other pilots that I fly with, uh, the leadership that we are under, the 18, 19 year old sailor who's working on the aircraft who we trust our lives with. It, it's really a symphony of literally thousands of dedicated people working together towards one common goal. To be part of that is, on a personal level is very special. For these aviators, the journey is over. But for the USS Gerald R. Ford, it's just beginning. Just months after this deployment, the Ford returned to European waters for a full tour of duty, coming under direct NATO command for the first time. With unmatched range and power, the Ford now leads Allied navies in the crucial task of deterring aggression and, if necessary, defending NATO against external threats. In these uncertain times, the world's largest warship is on watch in Europe and on guard.